News from Ahmoud, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president today. He has come out and said that he is certain that the wave of unrest in the Middle East will spread to Europe and then to America. The Associated Press is reporting today, quote, the tone of the remarks seemed to draw on the belief by Shiite Muslims that a revered 9th century saint known as the hidden Imam, the 12th Imam, will reappear. <laughs> Ahmadinejad also said that there was a need for a new system of rule. He wanted to make sure that worldwide oppression stops. So someone from extreme Islam wants the unrest to spread throughout Europe and eventually Mer America. And they're waiting for the 12th Imam. That is so strange because I know I've heard that information someplace before. Oh, and in Greece, they saw more violence today. This time, 60,000 people hit the streets and attacked police. One officer was set on fire by a gas bomb. And one man was uh, arrested carrying an archer's bow and arrows as well as an axe. They were also screaming about the rich. From the UK, on February 26th, remember this date, February 26th, there is a National Day of Action to protest. Now, this is in the UK. It's led by a radical group called UK Uncut. Now, I'm sure this is just a coincidence, but here in America, there is also a day of action. Protest scheduled on, of all days, February 26th. What a coincidence. Oh, and the radical group behind that one here in America just happens to be called U.S. Uncut. But don't worry. I heard on all the other news networks that it's ridiculous to think that this unrest could spread from the Middle East to Europe and eventually in America, and that it would be coordinated all around the world. I'm sure they're right. Cross your fingers and go back to sleep. Or, or we could try a different idea, and we could get informed. Hey, what do you say we try that one tonight? Come on. Hello, America. The president is supposed to speak in a few minutes. What a surprise is scheduled for 5 o'clock. But um, he's going to be speaking, and we've got a lot to do today. Hopefully he, uh, hopefully he doesn't waste the world's time. Tonight, we want to talk to you about perhaps the two most important words in America today. These words have been called the third rail of politics, so electric that no politician will ever go near them. From the very beginning of the progressive era, these two words have really played the role, the centerpiece of the progressive movement, social security. Now, I'm not talking about the program, you know, the one that's about to pla co uh, collapse. In fact, we were talking about it on the set before we went on, you know, the Ponzi scheme. No, no, no. I want you to look at social security, much bigger, S security for a society. Social security shouldn't fill anybody with a great sense of ease now, a safety net around our society, um, because it's not stable. You can't count on it. So where is their security when you can't count on that? The idea that no matter what mistakes or hardships you encounter in life, there will be someone to catch you and cushion your fall. That is the essence of Social Security. You might live a little extra the longer than you had money for, and so you will have somebody catch you. It keeps society from completely breaking apart. But if you can't count on that person going, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, you're never going to jump. You're never going to fall. You don't have real security, especially if you come out of the window and then the guy's like, yeah, I don't really. Oh, I was supposed to be over there. Where is the security? Here in America, we've increasingly gone down the progressive road of coddling people from cradle to grave. I know you get that already. But have you given the idea of social security on a global scale much thought? If you could pinpoint one thing that is keeping the world from spiraling out of control and into chaos, what would that be? What is it? What is the one thing? What is the, what is the keystone? You know what a keystone is? Keystone is what keeps an arch, a freedom arch, if you will. It's this stone. If you take this stone out, the arch will fall. It keeps all this pressure here and all this pressure here from collapsing into itself with this. That's what it is. That's America. 
The rest of the world has been put on notice. If dictators or nations get out of hand or take things too far, America will be there to put them in place. If your nation is pummeled by a tsunami, America will lead the rebuilding efforts. Do we have a perfect record? No. You see, in Egypt, we supported that guy for a long time. But America's consistent response when faced with evil, tragedy, or other adversities, historically, is pretty good. It's been to lead. Lead the fight against evil. Lead the fight for charitable efforts. Lead the first. Be the, be the one to answer the call for help. The rest of the world knows that what keeps this from collapsing is America. The globe, it is the U.S. We, excuse me, we just found out in the Middle East what is the keystone of the Middle East? What has apparently kept this whole thing from falling and going and collapsing?